Okay, Hannah is now over 12 months post-op ACL for her left knee. She's doing awesome. She's passed all the tests. The main functional testing difference is she's about 90% quads and hammies, okay, compared to this leg. Now, we don't mind 90, 95% difference because you can have a normal physiological difference between left and right. But she's in that maintenance period where we're going from the first year out post-surgery to the second year. So she needs to keep working on specific things. And so we're going to run through some single leg strengthening that allows her to access better strengthening in a deeper range because she's also lost a little bit of range still she's got about 140 degrees flexion here 145 on this one so you want to work on that depth of range which is going to help her with her sports it's very sport specific this stage this maintenance stuff you're going to be doing for the next sort of 12 to 24 months is always geared around what sport you're playing or what activity you're doing so it's very functional and very appropriate so first thing i'm going to work on is her pistol squat now with the pistol squat I'm going to give her an option where she goes with one leg, obviously pistol squat, with no straps as far as you can go, and then with straps, the full range. And I'll explain why we're doing that. So Hannah, do you want to show us your pistol squat? We're going to go on her right leg. Now, right leg is a good leg. So standing on your right leg, the pistol squat that she can do, this is all based on how much strength she's got. So whatever range she's got, we're going to look at that. Remember, trying to keep this knee straight, she's going to go as low as she can go, and then push off. Now remember, that she's got to be able to do eight to 10 of these, all right? So the first one, you might be able to be able to go real low, but then you might fatigue. So it's whatever you can do for eight to 10 reps, okay? So that's good for her. Now she's obviously gonna try and aim in the next year to get all the way down, all right? So let's have a look at the left one. Now the left one is just not as good. It's not as strong, it's not as flexible, all right? So let's have a look at this one. So as she drops down, she's a little bit slower at this. She struggles at about that point. So when she sort of gets there, there's a bit of struggle there but she's keeping good alignment. The good thing about this, if you're doing this one, if you're looking in a mirror or a window there, she can watch her knee tracking. She can see whether she's diving her knee in or keeping it straight. So this is a really good one for her. So her first two sets are gonna be working on how far can you go without failure, and that's all you go for, all right? Then the second two sets, she's gonna, I'm gonna allow her to experience full range. Because if you can get the full range out of things, you're gonna get some strengthening from sort of there to there. So she's, that lower part of that, of that pistol squat, she can't strengthen unless she gets stronger, right? So she's gonna do it via this. The thing about this one is, she's only allowed to put in weight through here, or, or pull through here, as much as she needs to top up the range to get down. Let's have a look at that. So when she drops down, she's going to get to the point where she has to use straps to get all the way down and in and out. Now it's a graduated increase in load here. So sort of nothing, more, more, more. She gets lower, lower, lower. She gets that experience of getting into a full squat and then pushing out again, all right? So the right leg is always going to guide her because it's the left ACL. So she'll be able to do a right leg, know how much she needs to do. Then on the left leg, she just needs to match it. What she'll probably have to do is put more load through here to match the amount of, you know, to get that range down because she'll find it harder. From about sort of 90 degrees down to that 130, 135, she's going to struggle through there. She's going to have to pull hard. You see how she had to pull harder with that? All right, so she's also going to make sure that she doesn't over fatigue through here, okay? So this, you're trying to put as much load through the leg and as less load through the hands, but for the first sort of few weeks to months, you don't want to overcook it and overload the knee with this exercise just to try and be a hero to get as much load through the knee. It'll come with time and you'll, she'll find she'll do less and less and less through here the more condition she gets with that. So that's a really good one for her to get a depth in the range and the strength in that deep position. <laughs> All right. <She's> <laughs> so that's your first one. Okay, second one, similar sort of movement, but we're gonna go do a step up from a lunge. So if you show us that one for me. So this is a normal bench height. These are nice and sturdy, nice and stable. That's probably the best thing to step up on. What she's gonna go down from is a lunge pattern. Okay, so she's sort of in that lunge, which she's below 90 degrees at this point here, and she's gonna try and drive up and step up. Now traditionally we were doing step downs to rehab. She is past that stage now. She is into sort of functional strengthening, agility, endurance. She's got to do stuff that's related to her sport. She's got to drive off that leg and get some strength through her knee. Now this is a great one to do. The good thing about this is she's doing it in a rehab type sense. When she comes down, this is the key here. It's the control, loading control as she comes down 
and then a quick push up. I don't mind if the form's a little bit cranky as she starts off with no load because there's no load apart from body weight through her knee. So she can spend time with no weights, getting her technique right, looking in the mirror, making sure that knee is not wavering inwards and getting all this form right, that she's not pushing off this too much. The way that you sort of want to keep that load on the front leg is when you position this foot here, okay, she hardly puts weight through it. So she has to drive through here. She hasn't got much power to push off. There is a push off, of course, maybe 10, 15%. But the idea is to drive through that front leg. Try the other side. That was her ACL leg. Let's have a look at the non-ACL. <laughs> yeah. So let's try that one again. What you're going to probably notice straight away is when she goes, it's just so much more effortless, right? She has so much better power coming up and the control down as well. So you just you watch this, bang straight up. She doesn't have to sort of try too much. The good thing about doing a right leg, like with all these exercises, is the right leg is going to internally guide her of how to do it. It's going to help tell her brain, this is how I want to perform, and she'll get that muscle coordination on her left to try and tidy up any form issues. So what we do with this one is then add load. So once she's got her form, I'm going to put on, give her fours, grab the fours from Hannah. So she's not 80 kilos, she's less than that. This is eight kilos, so it's more than 10% of her body weight, maybe 15% of her body weight, and that's ample enough for this exercise. Don't make the mistake of going too heavy and going straight over 20% of your body weight when you're trying to do a single leg step up. Drop the load down a little bit, okay, and get the reps and sets out and keep your form right. Now, the other thing you'll notice that what she's doing is when she steps up, she's trying to finish off the movement by doing full hip flexion to 90 degrees, okay? So as she comes down, she controls that movement. When she comes up, she's got to remember to finish it off to get the extension through the hip and go into that sort of sprint stance phase, which is very functional for what she needs to do. Okay, so there is your step up. Pull that. Good one, Hannah. Okay, last one is our triple extension. Triple extension meaning hip extension, knee extension, and plantar flexion, which is extension of dorsi, right? So she's gonna go from, again, lunge position. So she's trying to, she can't, hasn't got much load through here. She can't push off too much there. There is a push off though, because we want a power. She's gonna go up into the same sort of step up we did before. But the last bit of this is, when she comes through, she's going to plantar flex, okay? So it's going into that sprint stance, okay? With that swing phase where she pushes off. Very, very good for sprinters, but also for her, with her sport, is trying to get right up onto her toes so she can take off, okay? So she goes from there. The trick about this one is going as quick as you can, okay? But not sacrificing form. She's got to make sure she extends her right knee at the top and fully plantar flexes through the calf, okay? So she's getting her hip extension. And the thing about leaning forward is she'll get a little bit of extension past into that 10 degree mark, okay? If you're just upright, you won't get full, you know, hip extension past zero. So she's trying to get hip extension sort of like that, plus five, plus 10 degrees on the hip. She's trying to get zero on the knee, and she's trying to get full plantar flexion in here, okay? The hard part with a lot of these things, if you've got a bit of the quads weakness there, is trying to keep that knee straight when you load up onto your toe. That's a real difficult one. It does take a little bit of practice to try and get that, but awesome for her functional strength. But remember, she just starts off heel down, drives through the heel, plantar flexions. So you've got to make sure your heel, you're starting off with your heel down, otherwise there's no plantar flexion, you've already plantar flex. So heel down and then just push and drive. Great. Now, once she's got that technique right, we add on a band. The interesting thing about that is you may find, if you're, some of you are doing it yourself, is you're a bit unstable doing it. The band adds low, but also it gives her a bit of downward stability, which is fantastic. So, do you want to try that? So, band goes opposite shoulder, opposite foot, I find is the most comfortable. She's going to put it on her front leg, and it's got to go on the toes. Don't make the mistake of putting this on the heel, because you're going to raise the heel, so the band's got to stay under the toe to keep it planted. And so, when she drives up, obviously, depending on height dependent, it's going to be loose on her, because she's not as tall as me. But when she drives up, she's got the load there. So it's not too much. This is just a medium power band, but it's enough to give her some strengthening more than her body weight, of course, okay? Now you can obviously graduate this, you can make that into a thick power band as you get stronger, depending on how strong you are. Um, but this is a really good way of her getting that strength into that full triple extension and an awesome exercise for her long term. So those sort of three are going to be her single leg key exercises that she's going to work on to get that last 5-10% over the next 6-12 to 12 months, which is where she's sort of tending to plateau off. We want to keep her pushing along 
right through the end. So with Hannah at this sort of stage, she's also just doing strength and conditioning work, okay? Which is sort of post physio, if you like, but we wanna make sure she's doing it in a way that's gonna complement her strengthening for her leg. So a sled push and a sled pull was really nice. What she likes doing is doing a sled push and then a sled pull. Now the push part is gonna work on trying to get that drive going a lot more glutes, a lot more sort of bias through here. She's still working quads, but the pull is a lot more bias in the quads. And there's a very, very good way of getting that extension strength that way under load, okay? Which is, with most conventional sort of exercise and strengthening work, you don't really get that done. Trick about this one, what she's gotta make sure of is she's flat through her lower back, okay? Almost like a scrum type position in rugby, she's gotta be flat. When she comes back though, I want her in a squat position, okay? So when she pulls back, she's pulling back that way, so she's extending her knee as the focus. So every time she does it, she's trying to extend the knee, use her quads to pull the sled, okay? A lot of people tend to, round their back, okay, and use their hammies and their glutes. You've got to sit there with a neutral spine and try and focus the bias on knee extension when you pull back. So obviously this one, she's more like in a scrum position, so she's really pushing through her hips. And you'll notice with this one, when she comes back again, she's keeping that more upright posture and pushing through her toes and quads. And that's a lovely way of getting her doing some endurance work and strength work, which is just a little bit different than doing conventional squats and deadlifts. All right, that's it for this week. See you next time.